17 million tons of carbon dioxide are released into the atmosphere every single day. This amount of carbon dioxide has devastating effects on our health and the environment. Many huge corporations in the energy industry are not meeting safety standards. To make matters worse, hazardous gases such as carbon dioxide and methane cause the temperature to increase constantly. This can be devastating to entire ecosystems, potentially wiping out entire species from Earth. Coal plants release a great deal of CO2 into the atmosphere. Uh, and the main effect for that is it leads to a warming world. So we've got hotter days, uh, then you can think about potentially sea level rise, melting ice, things of that nature. Perhaps worst of all, this energy is non-renewable. This means that our fuel will soon run out. The applications of this are enormous. Factories will not be able to produce food. People will not be able to get around and our society will sink back to the Middle Ages. Not only are we getting CO2 coming out of the smokestacks at coal-fired plants, but you're also getting a lot of pollutants. Um, it can affect, for instance, uh, respiratory issues. Not only are fossil fuels causing environmental problems, but they are also causing major health problems for humans. In fact, in Mexico City, the pollution is so bad that being outdoors during the day is as bad for your lungs as smoking two packs of cigarettes. You have the double whammy there of um, climate issues as well as public health issues. percent of the energy that is used in the United States comes from fossil fuels such as coal, there are other, cleaner sources of energy. One such example is wind energy. Wind power is generated when wind blows on specifically designed blades, making them rotate. Many countries have already adopted wind energy because it is renewable. We will never run out of wind. Another form of alternative energy is the sun. Solar panels are designed so that they turn heat from the sun into usable electrical energy. If we really invest in solar energy, that's an unlimited, almost infinite source you know, for, for humanity's needs. Aside from its renewability and cleanness, solar energy has another significant advantage. It is very practical. Solar energy can be used easily to heat various places, houses, pools, and water tanks. Iceland and many other countries have adopted a new kind of renewable energy source, geothermal energy. Geothermal energy uses heat from inside the earth as power. This type of energy is very inexpensive because it rarely needs maintenance after a plant has been built. Yet another, even cheaper source of energy is hydroelectric energy. Hydroelectric energy turns energy from the flow of water into electricity. Really the best you know, options for us right now are investing in renewable energy. One of the greatest problems with alternative energy is its monetary cost. Perhaps one of the greatest barriers for our government to invest in these new technologies is their economic downside. However, in retrospect, fossil fuels cost more than renewable energies. For example, employees get sick and instead of going to work, they go to the hospital. This results in a lack of productivity. When we talk about how expensive alternative energy is, uh, it's only because we're not really experiencing dollar-wise, the full cost of coal energy on our utility bills. In fact, renewable energy is getting cheaper and cheaper. In the near future, it may be much less expensive to use this new technology. Over time, as we make more wind energy, as we make more solar power plants and solar cells, they're going to get cheaper and cheaper. We may have higher energy bills today. We may be a lot better off 10 years from now. So it's, it's really a question of you know, paying today or paying a lot more in the future. Especially in economic times like these, renewable energy investment can be very beneficial to the economy as a whole. If we had a 20% federal standard for renewable energy by 2020, we could create about 300,000 new jobs in this country. One of the greatest obstacles in going forward with alternative energy is Congress. Although the benefits of alternative energy outweigh the costs significantly, Congress acts as a brick wall for energy reform. We have a lot of members of Congress and a lot of senators uh, who 
sort of blindly support the coal industry and the gas industry. Congress has come quite close to passing energy reform legislation in recent years, but no major reforms have been accomplished. The House passed a full climate and energy bill this year, and we were really thrilled to see that happen and have them take that big step forward. They've never done that before, uh, but then the Senate didn't follow through, and it doesn't look like they're going to follow through. really you know, do a lot yourself too to push for renewable energy. There are many ways in which you can help. One way is to talk to your electric energy company and ask to get part of the power for your home from alternative energy. Some um, electric companies allow you to um, you know, say that you want a certain percentage of your energy from renewable sources. And also just talking and asking your policymakers, your senator, your representatives that you really do care about renewable energy and you would like to see more of it. You may think that middle school students' voices are not heard by Congress. However, this is not true at all. In fact, if anything, the voices of middle schoolers are even more powerful. When it comes to climate change and pollution, your voice is really powerful because you're going to inherit the world produced by the decisions that these policymakers are making and what our energy future looks like. Germany has created 300,000 jobs from alternative energy. It is getting far ahead in the competition for renewable energy technologies. We need to start investing in these technologies now so that we do not get behind. I want the United States to be leading the way on alternative energy. I want us to be exporting high-tech wind turbines to other countries. Um, so I don't want us to be in a position where we're relying on the rest of the world for the best technology. Temperature rises near the poles and drops near the equator reduce wind speeds. This makes wind energy less accessible. The sooner we start fixing our energy problems, the easier it will be. What a lot of people don't know is that the technologies we need, we actually already have them. They're here. The biggest challenge is just can we get them out into the real world producing electricity? Alternative energy is our best option. It is something we need to invest in now as it will pay off incredibly in the future. The sun is setting on our opportunities. We need to act now.